Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday Evenings with Ezekiel. I'm Joe Green, pastor of Second Baptist Church in South Hadley, Massachusetts. Glad you could join us today. Uh, Let's jump right into our uh, chapters today, uh, chapters 33 and 34 of Ezekiel. And we only have a few more weeks of our discussion. We'll have gone through the whole book, the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. It's amazing. It's a long book. So those of you who hung in there, uh, good job. Uh, and and hopefully you've seen some of the richness of this entire book. And again, just to review, around 590 B.C., a man named Ezekiel, he was an exile in Babylon. He was a Jewish priest, but he had been taken away exile from his homeland into Babylon. And he starts to receive visions of God, even sees God's glory. And these visions of God also is what calls Ezekiel to be a prophet of God and proclaim messages of, of doom, mostly at the beginning of the book, against uh, Israel and the destruction of Jerusalem. And that doom manifested itself in the Babylonian Empire that came and destroyed the Jewish homeland in 586 B.C., fulfilling Ezekiel's prophecies. Now, today we go to chapter 33 and 34, and it's a turning point in the book of Ezekiel because those prophecies of destruction from all those other chapters we read about, they reach their full and final fulfillment in chapter 33 with a report that Jerusalem has fallen. And now that book turns, the book takes a turn because now that Ezekiel's judgment oracles are fulfilled, Jerusalem's actually destroyed, now the Lord starts to show Ezekiel, and therefore all of Israel, visions of a future hope and a restoration of his people. Um, so let's look specifically at chapters 33 and 34. As I said, 33 is a, a turning point in the book. All those prophecies of doom against Jerusalem, they, they come to fulfillment in that report. And chapter 24, if you remember, that was also sort of a mini turning point in that in chapter 24, it announced the beginning of the siege of Jerusalem. Well, now in chapter 33, we get the final report that the city has actually uh, finally been captured. And Ezekiel has stayed true to his role as a watchman for Israel. And he's going to continue to warn Israel to repent, to stay true to God. Now, in contrast to Ezekiel's faithfulness, Israel's leaders, referred to as shepherds in this section, they've not cared for the people. They'll be, they're going to be swept away in uh, this judgment as God, the great shepherd, intervenes and then promises to send a righteous shepherd one day. All right, so that's the um, a summation of this section, chapters 33 and 34. But now let's dig a, a little bit deeper. Chapter 33 to begin with. Chapter 33, if you read it, you notice it contains a lot of material that seems very familiar. And that's because you actually read very similar things in earlier chapters. Why? Why this repetition? Well, this repetition acts as a summary confirmation of the previous prophetic words, but now, because the hearer is in a new situation, in other words, the the city of Jerusalem is about to fall, they're able to hear those same prophecies, those same words, in a new light, in light of the fulfillment. Uh, So, for instance, in chapter 18, Ezekiel was called to be a watchman for Israel, who warns Israel of that coming disaster. Well, now that we're in chapter 33, it repeats some of that same calling, some of that same language about uh, Ezekiel being a watchman, but now the Jerusalem's been destroyed. Um, And so that calling um, is repeated to show that Ezekiel has fulfilled his calling. His prophecies are coming to fruition. And indeed, that report of the fall of Jerusalem takes place in chapter 33, verse 21. It says this, In the twelfth year of our exile, in the tenth month, on the fifth day of the month, a fugitive from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been struck down. See, that's the turning point. And so now, when we read those the repetition of Ezekiel's call to be a watchman, we see that, oh, the city has fallen. He has stayed true. We also read about earlier calls for Israel to repent. Those same calls of repentance, Israel, turn, are repeated in um, chapter 33, verses 10 through 20. And that 
that emphasizes, again, same, very similar words to earlier in the book, that even as the city is destroyed, as Ezekiel predicted, the people can still repent and get on board with God's plan. Because God's not finished with his people. Although the city is destroyed and they're being, the whole uh, nation is being put into exile, that doesn't mean God's done with his people. Uh, so they can still get on board with what God's going to do in the future, even though it's going to look different, because it's not going to be in the promised land in the short term. But in the long term, it will be. And instead of simply listening to God's words through Ezekiel, um, and this is what verses 30 to 33 really emphasize, is that they should respond with accent actions right the time for just listening because they gathered they'd listen to israel blab on about the destruction of jerusalem but now god's point is yeah you heard but actually respond with your actions and if the people respond then they're not going to get swept up in this destruction but rather they're going to be ushered into the coming restoration because god has a plan for both that plan for destruction is being fulfilled but he also as we're going to get into has a plan for restoration so if they repent then instead of getting swept up in that destruction they'll be ushered into that new phase of restoration that ezekiel focuses on in the next chapters all right so that's chapter 33 now let's look deeper in chapter 34 well as the lord sweeps away unrepentant all the unrepentant in jerusalem he especially in chapter 34 calls out the leaders of Israel. And he uses the imagery of a shepherd, a shepherd for a leader. So that instead of being uh, a shepherds, the leaders weren't shepherds who cared for God's sheep. These leaders have used the sheep just to benefit themselves. Uh, I think a good summation of the whole chapter is in verses, this is chapter 34, uh, verses 2 and 3. It reads, uh, God's saying to Ezekiel, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, oh, the shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. And so these leaders are falling under God's judgment um, because they've been abusing God's flock. They haven't been shepherds who cared for their sheep. They've been shepherds who have abused and used the sheep. But God will have none of that because God is the great shepherd to his sheep and he himself will care for his flock. He says this in Ezekiel 34 verse 15. He says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. So he's going to, he's promising he's going to return the scattered sheep. And he especially is going to care for the weak, the abused, and the sick sheep. Uh, this is his promise. So that in contrast, he's punishing the shepherds of Israel, but he's going to be the shepherd. He's going to take care of them, not like the, the earthly shepherds did. And not only that, but God will also one day raise up a new shepherd from the lineage of David, who will then... Um, guide the sheep in truth and justice and in God's grace. Uh, this He says this in verse 23 and 24 of chapter 34. He says, And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. So this shepherd, this promised shepherd, will lead God's people into a renewal, a renewal of the covenant and restoration. That's what it means when God says, I'm going to be your God, you're going to be my people. That reminds us of, of what he said when he gave the law to Moses and created a new covenant with them, that they were going into the promised land and they would, again, God was going to be their God, he, they were going to be a special people. Um, so this, out of that destruction, is going to come renewal and it's going to happen through this promised shepherd. All right, so that's what chapters 33 and 34 really go into. As a point of application, um, you know, as Christians, we believe that that one shepherd of the line of David um, is talking about Jesus Christ. That, that Jesus is that one shepherd who would restore um, that relationship between God and his people. And that Jesus himself I think alludes to this passage in John chapter 10, verses 11 through 16. This is what Jesus says. He says, I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Uh, He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And I I don't know, as I read that, if you couldn't help but hear the echoes of Ezekiel 34 in Jesus' words, that the one shepherd would come, that he's going to care for his sheep. And in light of the cross, uh, Jesus' death on the cross, we see in an even greater way that the self-sacrificial love of God as our great shepherd. Now, earthly leaders, they they tend to use people for their own gain. Right? People get power so that they can benefit themselves, usually. Uh, but that's not God. God's not that kind of leader because God doesn't need anything from us. He is totally self-sufficient and satisfied in the Trinity. Uh, however, because of his great love for us and his desire to restore us eternally, an an eternal fellowship with him, he lays down his life for the sheep. Uh, He takes on their burden. He takes on their punishment. He takes on their exile, if you will, so that we wouldn't be exiled from God eternally because he's a good shepherd. And that reminds us that even good earthly leaders, because there are good earthly leaders, uh, they seem few and far between, but they, they do exist. But even good earthly leaders, they're fragile. They're fallen. And, and they will always disappoint. They'll always fall short. And so don't place your hope in earthly leaders, but look to the great shepherd of the sheep. As Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. So if you feel that call, if you, if you recognize the voice of Jesus in these scriptures that, that I've read, Jesus, that they have familiarity to you, And the shepherd is calling you. Respond to him. Trust in him. And know that Jesus fulfilled the promises here of Ezekiel for one shepherd so that we're empowered by God to truly and and eternally uh, be with him. And and he's empowered by God to care for the sheep. And that's not just at a, when I say eternal life, I don't just mean afterlife, you know, like after we're dead. Eternal life starts now. God will care for you now. God wants to be your shepherd. Jesus wants to be your shepherd now. So that, yes, he'll, he'll lead us to eternal waters. Um, but also, the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, that famous psalm, that applies to now. Um, and, and if you have never read it, read it in light of the cross. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He li- he leads me besides the still waters. Uh, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So that psalm, those words of a shepherd leading and, and, and protecting and guiding and, and casting away fear, that's for now. And so when Jesus is our great shepherd and we understand that he even gave his life for us, um, it gives new meaning. That, that psalm that's br- brought comfort and direction for God's people for millennia, we let the truth of that psalm and the Lord is our shepherd gain an even extra depth in light of the cross, in light of the death of Jesus, so that we understand what kind of shepherd he is, what kind of loving shepherd, not like the shepherds of Ezekiel 34, but rather the fulfillment of God's promises that one day he'd raise up that shepherd and he's available to you. He's there to be a good shepherd, to walk with you in your life today. And then that, that walking with you continues as he leads you all the way to the eternal waters. Um, and that's a part of the good news. So we dug deeply into Ezekiel and um, we're going to dig even more um, in our discussion group. So if you're watching us live, then... Click on that link and join and enjoy, excuse me, join us. And if not, I'll see you next time on Wednesday evenings with Ezekiel.